In this video, I'm going to replace this old safety hazard workbench with a new custom built one. And I'm going to show you step by step on how to do it, and I'll have the plans linked below. To get started, I'm going to clean out a work area, then get my measurements. I'm going to make my workbench 35 inches tall so it matches the height of this table saw. The height of the bench is going to be 35 inches minus 5 inches for these wheels. I'm going to take another 1.5 inch off the height to account for the 1.5 inch thickness of the tabletop. So that means I'm going to cut all my legs at 28.5 inches. I ended up making 10 28 inch cuts. Next I laid out the tabletop so I could get a measurement of the frame. With the frame laid out, I can now start putting everything together. To hold it, I ended up using some tight bond wood glue, as well as 3 inch construction screws. To hold these 4x4s together, I ended up using these Spax power lags. You don't have to pre-drill a hole, so it makes it very easy to put in. This is the frame for the top, so I'm going to flip it over and put on the bottom piece. With the bottom frame on, I now have an outline shell for my workbench. It's really just two rectangle boxes held together by a square middle. The workbench is going to end up being 4 by 8 feet, but it's very easy to modify a box design like this if you want something smaller. Next I'm going to use some scrap wood to build supports across the top and bottom. To mount the supports, I'm going to use one of these Craig pocket jigs to make holes for the screws. Here I kind of made a mistake because after I put the support braces up I decided I wanted shelves on the bottom. So if you want shelves I recommend waiting before you put on the top support braces otherwise the shelves can't fit inside. It's not a huge deal because you can temporarily take them off but I'll show you what I mean later. Moving on the next step is to put on the wheels. For the wheels I use these ever built casters that have a total weight capacity of 350 pounds. These lag screws are very strong and require pre-drilled holes and a ratchet to screw down. With the wheels on, it made it very easy to move around. Next step is to put on the bottom shelves, so I'm going to take its measurements and then cut around the support beams. It was about here when I realized my mistake, so I took off the support beams on the top, then put on the shelves, and then screwed them back in. For the two side shelves, you can see here I cut around the support beams, and I'm going to do the same thing for the back piece.
I have the shelves cut, so now I'm gonna use a countersink bit like this to pre-drill the holes so that I can screw them down and everything will be flush. It's important to pre-drill the holes or use a countersink bit, otherwise the wood can split when you're screwing in so close to the edge. I like using a countersink bit because the screws sit flush, so it will be a lot easier when I slide things on and off the shelves. Now this next step is kind of optional, but I want to run power through this thing, so I'm going to pre-drill holes so I can slide the wire through. With that done, it's now time to put on the tabletop. I was going to make the tabletop out of 3 quarter inch birch plywood, but it was all out so I ended up using the sand material. Sand plywood is actually a little bit lighter, so it's going to be easier to move the table around. The downside is that it's a little softer, so it's going to be easier to scratch. Early on, I decided I wanted my table to have a little cutout where I could stand or sit. This tabletop is 4x8, but if I was making a smaller one, I probably wouldn't have this cutout. Eventually, I'll have some plans for a smaller table link below that you can just download. I plan on putting some heavy items on this table, so I'm putting an extra plywood sheet for support. Having this thickness gives me some versatility if I want to add saw stops later. I'm going to put these one and quarter inch screws underneath the table because I don't want them to be visible. I'm going to repeat the same process and make a cutout for the notch. With that, my workbench is put together, but after using it for a little bit, I decided that I wanted to run some power through it. I'm going to run all the power through this switch so that it can turn off and on the plugs downstream. To get the power to the switch, I found an old black extension cord that I cut off the end, then I spliced the wires to connect to the switch. The hot line connects on the bottom right, and the load on the left side is then carried to the plug. Because I'm on a 20 amp circuit, I'm going to use this yellow 12-2 cable to run the power to the extra plugs downstream. So again, the hot wire goes to the switch, then connects to the plug, and then the load is carried to the other outlets through this yellow cable. If you don't feel comfortable, talk to an electrician to make sure you're doing everything right. With everything wired, I put on some metal face plates, then grabbed a shop vac to test out that everything was working. The idea behind this is that I can now flip a switch to turn on the vacuum for easy dust collection. And with that, we now have a powered portable workstation. This workbench is a huge improvement from my old workbench that looks like a cheap robot dog. This new one is much more safe and will help me be more productive. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have these plans and other plans linked below. If this was helpful, check out my home playlist for other builds. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.